Hello and welcome to Racers Now. It is the best day in the British racing calendar, day one of Royal Ascot. In two hours, we get three Group 1s, the best two-year-old race of the week, at the Group 2 Coventry Stakes. No messing about. We're piling straight in, SD. They've put five mil on today. I think they had to, to maintain good to firm. It's been well over 20 degrees and glorious sunshine at Ascot all day today. Proper summer racing ground. How much are you looking forward to it, SD? No, I can't stand the thing. Just awful disease, ridiculously large handicaps. Too many runners, much better racing at Beverly tomorrow, isn't there? More Idiotic. of that later. Idiotic statement. Mrs. SD mucked it up this year. Right. Every year I make sure I'm away for Royal Alaska. Just take myself out of this. You know, you've got Ed Chamberlain singing around the bloody bandstand. <laughs> I make sure. I'm away, and then, oh, terrible, terrible. Mr. John of Gaunt for this. Yeah, but you, you're blaming Mrs. SD. Two of the last three years you've been in the country for Royal Ascot. I mean, this is a regular recovery. We can't recovery. help COVID, can we? Um, this yeah. is regular. Anyway, anyway. Right, we're not messing around, SD. First race is the Queen Anne. Um, this is the worst renewal probably in my time. Definitely the worst one since Accidental Agent won in 2018. I think it's probably worse than that. As identified on this channel many months ago, where are all the milers? There really isn't any top-notch older milers, and that is what we're seeing here. We've got Charin as your um, uh, favourite in there. Well, um, vying for favouritism with Factor Cheval. I mean, Charin being favourite for, for a Group 1 at Royal Ascot is all you need to know, really. His, his two best uh, wins over a mile have come this year in, in the listed and Group 2 race. I don't think he's improved, actually, on last year. Um, not as much as the ratings might suggest. I just think he's been running against inferior horses compared to last year and winning rather than being third against Paddington. The ground might be too quick for Charing anyway. I think it will be. Factor Cheval, the French horse, might go off favourite. I think the ground might be too quick for him. Even more so for Big Rock. Surely Big Rock needs slower ground. Then comes Audience, who ran away with the lockinge from the front, but even his opponents um, letting have an uncontested lead there. That ain't going to happen here. His stamina is going to be stretched. That was his first ever run over a mile when he's a five-year-old. Maljum seems to be the, the hipster selection, but I mean, what's he done? He hasn't done anything really for, for two years. He was unlucky in the St. James's Palace two years ago. Hasn't done anything since. He's had two runs since and hasn't been close to winning either. You can't tell me he's going to jump from a five-runner listed race where he was fourth. Uh, to the Queen and I, I just can't have it. Docklands is a handicapper. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think it's a, it's a really poor race for me, SD. So, your conclusion is no bet. I'll, I'll keep nope. it. I'm having a bet. I'm having a bet. Oh, oh right. I keep it very soon. Hipster selection, Maljum. I mean, uh, since when has Fat Tony ever been called a hipster? Good God. That man. Anyway. I can't uh, have Maljum. I can't yes, have Maljum. Yes, it's, it's, it's a... It's an absolutely dreadful renewal, probably because last year's three-year-olds are absolute crap. As you say, Charon was the rag for the Sussex last year. All of a sudden, favourite this. I, I don't know what wins. I mean, maybe you could argue Royal Scotsman's overpriced. Maybe Docklands is a, is a decent asker also. It's all maybe. It's a bag of rubbish. Move on. Well, I am having a bet, FD, and you've teed it up lovely for me there because the bet is Royal Scotsman. 20 to 1 each way for me, four places. Um, I mean, how he is a bigger price than Docklands and Maldrum, I do not know. He'll try and lead all the way. It's as simple as that. That's what he'll have to do. He did that at Epsom, as we all know. Whether he can stay there, get to the front at Ascot and stay there is a completely different question. But in a race that is full of rubbish, I think he's the he's the one with the um, that could potentially show a bit more. Um, he's basically won a Group Three at Epsom on the bridle last time. Um, he's always threatened to be a good horse throughout his career. He's obviously had a few issues, stone bruising. I think they said last last year. Back to somewhere close to his best at Epsom, and if he comes on a little bit for that and improves again, which he'll have to, then he's banging with a chance here, twenty to one each way. Um, Earlier on when I wrote the notes, I was going to put up uh, High Royal again. I did put up him in the lockinge. He didn't deliver for me. He was 66 to 1. Now he's 33 to 1. I think that's probably about the right price. Again, not a great renewal. So I wouldn't put you off back in um, High Royal either. But um, yeah, the bet for me is Royal Scotsman. I really do um, I really do think that that's the best bet on offer in the race. 
I think he'll either be first or, or last, to be honest with you. But anyway, now you're going to question why I'm putting him up each way. But it's my that's that's what I do. Twenty to one each way, four places. That'll do for me. Default, default. You know, it's twenty to one. Must put it up four places. Just, just a quick but, note. He's at a hotel. You know, he's, he's near Ascot. He could be at Virginia Water. He could be in Bagshot. He could be in Ascot itself. He's in Slough, and as a result of him being in Slough, we he's probably haven't got time for this. You're on a dial-up Wi-Fi connection. I'm trying to help you. So if you can boost it, boost it. How bad is it? You you sort of slur a little. You so you sound a bit like Oliver Reed. As long as the selections are getting out there, SD, that's all that matters. Um, on to race number two. This is the Coventry 23 two-year-olds over six furlongs, nine to two the field. I mean, yeah, very, very difficult. Apart from Amo Racing, who've got one in there, Angelo Bunarote, who makes his debut in the Coventry. Um, it's minefield stuff, to be fair. Coward of the country, uh, county, coward of the county, is definitely the right favourite for Joseph O'Brien. He, he's had one star over in Ireland and had a win over Whistle Jacket, who is favourite for a race later this week for the O'Brien, for the Edna O'Brien. Um, Camille Pizarro is the O'Brien chosen one. Yard won it last year ran a future Group 1 winner in it the year before. I can see him. I mean, he's any price you like on the exchange, this Camila, Camila Pacero. Um, uh, he's about nine at the moment on the exchange. I can see him definitely going off shorter than what he is now. But there is a bet for me, SD, and that is Aaron. For the Paul and Oliver Cole yard, um, was professional as you like him. One of the very first two-year-old races of the season at Newmarket in April. Not seen since, which has been the plan. I think that helps. I think that helps in his price because he's not been seen since. He beat Al, Quad Al Quadra and the actor on debut. They both re -oppose here. They've ran since and won since. They're both around half the price <laughs> of, what, of what Aaron is at the moment. Um, Yard have won this three times before. That was before my time, but it is a fact. He was forced to lead at Newmarket, but he doesn't have to. I think he's the best bet in this race, definitely. 25 to 1 each way for me. How do you know he doesn't have to lead when he's had one run? I think, I think he was a reluctant <laughs> leader. I think he was a reluctant leader. If you read the comment from the trainer after the race, they said he was a reluctant leader, but he, they thought he was pretty professional. I've done my research, SD. I think he's a good price, 25 to 1. Right. Okay. I, I, I'll, be, I'll, be very, I'll be very honest with you. The, 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 race, the, the outcome of the race certainly lasts on, you know, which horse improves the most. Um, yeah. And it's, to me, it is a complete and utter lottery. If you were to give me a free bet, I'd put it on Catalyze because I thought he did it really well at, uh, at Hamilton. But honestly, it, it makes it makes about as much appeal as, you know, going to a bloody Ava tribute night or something. It's a, just a feral contest for betting. Yeah, there's a good music night at Haydock this weekend for anyone interested. Yes, um, anyway, yeah, Tom. Pete Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and incidentally, yeah. Mick Walsh will be at Royal Ascot this week in the Windsor oh, Enclosure. Yeah. Very good. Get your calendars. I certainly won't be going down to the Windsor Enclosure this week. Uh, on to the 345. This is another group one. This is the King Charles the Third Stakes, used to be called the King Stands. Um, Five furlong sprint, quick and easy from me. Um, I think this is a very big step up for Big Evs, yet to win outside his own age group. And it's difficult for young sprinters, i.e. three-year-olds, in open company, in my opinion. The Australian horse, Asphora, doesn't look good enough to me. Ran at Haydock the other week, got no way near winning. He's definitely not one of the best Australian sprinters. Um, Believing has got as good a chance as any on the back of her impressive win at Haydock. Um, I think five furlongs at Ascot is perfect for her. I won't put anyone off back in her. The price has long gone, though, from an anti-post perspective. Uh, but regional is the bet for me. I thought he ran a massive race on his first start of the season at the Curra. He was right up in the van in that race um, that favoured those coming off the pace. For four of the first six, including the winner, Mitt Barhi, came from off the pace. Mitt Barhi was actually last at the furlong pole. Regional was up there throughout. First start of the season, plugged on, more than plugged on, stayed on really well. Um, he won the Sprint Cup at Haydock last September, as SD will know fondly. That was over six. This is a stiff five at Ascot. I think it's perfect for him. The ground's fine. I think Regional wins this race and he's 92. You might be a bit old. But uh, anyway, I don't, I don't know. Um, 
you, you've already alluded to it. Uh, the, the, the problem, I, I would take issue with one of the things you said. Three-year-olds don't have a bad record in this at all, if you look back. And the problem is you could throw a blanket over the bloody lot of them. So what's going to win? It's going to be quick, Bram. It's going to be five furlongs. Oh, we know where ST's going here. Can I predict? Can I predict? Well, you know what I'm backing. Well, no, I, I do. Sorry. The show. Sorry, the way, the way you were speaking, you was you were speaking along the lines of twilight calls, fast ground, but he never wins. You're not oh, putting no, him. No, no, I know. I, I, look, I've, I've had that argument with myself. He never wins. He's, he's trainer, last trained a winner when Methuselah was a lad. So. Yeah, but it hasn't been this calendar year, that is for sure. No, no, no. Look, it was it was quick five furlongs at Newmarket when seven questions won, and he's a very backable price. Um, got stuck in the mud last time. The cheap pieces have gone on. He's been an improved horse since, and if he just keeps improving, he's as he's as good a chance as any. And in what looks a fairly open renewal, now I do have to chuck another one in at a at a big price as well. Um, and that's that's Makarova, who I'm pretty convinced. Once, five furlongs, fast ground, and ran perfectly well last year when fourth in the Nunthorpe. So there is some group one form there. And at a massive price, and given he's been running, you know, under not optimal conditions, I think he I think he could run very, very well at a, at a huge price. And that that's the way I've played the race. But again, I'm I'm fairly agnostic as to the outcome. I mean big Evs didn't be just to be clear, big Evs beat nothing in absolutely nothing um that that leads me i'll come in there rest of you because that leads me nicely into my uh the bet that i'm putting up at a a crazy price in this race on directly on the back of you saying he beat nothing at york i'm going to put one up at a daft price on one that he did beat at york and that's killian at 66 to 1 now yes it's a crazy price it's it'll be triple figures on the exchange this um we but can't a, the exchange. No, but in a, not in, a renewal, in, in a renewal, as SD has admitted, you could throw a blanket over them. Um, and going against what I said earlier about three year olds, because this is a three year old. I'm not they do have a good they do have a decent record in this race. I'm just saying it's it's difficult. It's a big leap from three year old sprinting to open age sprinting. That's that's what that's what I'm saying. Um but this uh, this Killian Archie Watson won this race last year with uh, Brad Sell. SD will confirm that I uh, backed that and put it and tipped it to him on the day. Um, that was with a three year old, my last winner. Yeah, surely this Killian would have had options this week to run in a handicap of ninety nine. And the fact they're running here is a sign in itself. Maybe the owner wants a day out in a Group One. I don't know. But first, first, um, only second start for Archie Watson has finished behind Big Evs on three of his last four starts. That's why he's sixty six to one. If you're being generous, and you've got to be quite a bit generous at 66, you could make an excuse for each of his last four starts, actually. He was bumped at the start at Goodwood um, last August. Six furlongs was too far at York, where he went off nine to four favourite. He went off nine to four favourite in that in that race, that good race at York. Um, Doncaster in September was too soft and at the end of a long season. And at York on his only start this year, and his first start for Archie Watson... He made a bit of an eye-catching move between the two and the one pole, but he was running kind of a bit lonely on his own, away from Big Evs, um, and he ran out of steam there. Hopefully, he will strip better. You've got to make all sorts of leaps and leaps of faith to be putting one up at 66 to 1. It's only his second start for Archie Watson. I'm giving it a go. SD smiling there. I honestly, there were more excuses there than Donald Trump. At the court. Plenty. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Plenty. I mean, according to the Racing Post app, he's 80 somewhere. Oh, with Betfair and Paddy, I think. Um, but but you tell me, honestly, this Racing Post app is about no use whatsoever. Well, I looked to I looked a couple of minutes before coming on, uh, and we'll just have to. I think it's 66. I'll have a, fi- a final check now, li- live on here. Uh, because we are, you know, professional. The one thing I think you've got going for. Oh yeah, I'm having eight ten. I'm having eight ten. There we are. There we are. I'm even getting you better. I think the one thing you've got going for you is Archie is very, very good at this meeting. So, uh, you know, it would be it would be crass of me to crab it. Yeah, it's just obviously there's no standout. There's there's no um, there's no standout in the sprinting division. We've been saying that for weeks. Yeah, I'm mm. just taking a chance. I do think regional will win. Um, and hopefully Killian can pick up some pieces. Right, swiftly moving on. Um, this is the race of the week. This is the Group 1 St. James's Palace uh, Stakes over a mile, round a bend. 
You've got the 2,000 guineas winner from Newmarket, the 2,000 guineas winner from Ireland, the 2,000 guineas winner from France, and an Aidan O'Brien Group 1 winning two-year-old uh, to add into the mix as well. It's a no-bet race for me, but I do think it's an ideal race for Notable Speech, who is favourite, um, with his stalk and pounce tactics. And I do think Sean Levy on Rosalian, who I love, has got a job on his hands from store one. Um, although there's not too many runners to cause him too much trouble. So I can see Rosalian coming out, taking a pull at the back, being dead last round the bend, and then Sean Levy's got a decision to make. Does he go the brave route up the inside or does he come round the whole field down the middle of the, the straight? Yeah, uh, it's a sit back and watch and enjoy. This is a belting race. Well, a judge who you and I both uh, respect gave that exact line and you just relayed it. So, what, a belting so well race? Well, just just about the draw. I say, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, that's uh, that's original from me. The draw? Yeah, he's drawn in store one. I think he'll oh, be last. I'll just have a look back at your WhatsApp messages. But, but anyway, that was brought up on several occasions yesterday when I told you what I was going to do with this race. Um... I think I think notable speech is the most likely winner, but that doesn't mean Rosalian isn't value and isn't value each way because I, I think it's between the two. I don't think you're going to lose an awful lot if Rosalian loses, and and you you go back to the Guineas and he was he was going best of everything two furlong out because it was his first run of the year, and I don't think there's a lot between them now. Notable speech had had three spins on the on the all weather at this point. I personally, I think they're a long way clear of the rest. I think Emily Longfellow has an awful lot to find when he finished eight. Now, we know Aiden can work the oracle, but but Jesus Christ, in, in form terms, it's an awful lot. So I, I'm quite prepared to, to back Rosalian each way here because I don't think, I think you can overcomplicate races in terms of tactics. And I think he's comfortably the second best horse in the race and could be the best horse in the race. And with eight runners, it's begging for an each way play. And it is just more about this is how you bet strategically. Um, there's, there's a dead eight runners, um, and he really shouldn't. You know, you'll you'll get him what one point seven. That he'll be that he'll be in the in the first three to 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 limit any losses. And there's a bloody good chance. St. If I put up if I put up one each way at seven to two, you would laugh me off the. Well, after. look, look. Really, this is the way you make money from betting. I do it every week on the race course. I make no apologies for putting this also up each way because I think I, I I think it's the right frame of race for it. Now, Sod's law will dictate we get a non-runner, but but nevertheless, as it stands, that is the way to play the race. Yeah, I, it's just a no bet race for me because um, I don't know how good the two French horses are. I've got absolutely no idea. We'll fa- we'll we'll find well, out. Well, where's our tomorrow. French racing correspondent? I think English. that. I think that Henry Long, I've got no idea how good they are. And one of them comes from a, comes from a race that wasn't a classic in, in France. Um, I've got no idea. Henry Longfellow, I think that he'll get well backed. I'm not saying he'll win, but I think I've, I can just see him getting well backed. Notable speech is clearly very good. And Rosalian, I'm still not 100% sure Rosalian truly, truly stays a stiff mile. And this is one of the, you know, this is one of the stiffest miles really in um in the UK for races of this quality. It's stiffer than Newmarket. It's stiffer than Newbury. It's stiffer than um, Goodwood. He there wasn't ain't any stopping other. the current, was he? I mean, I, I think that that's just a bogus argument. He's by blue point. He's by blue point. Um, well, anyway. Just because he's dead. Ah, good God. Good God. It's a no-bet race for me. It's a no-bet race for me. I was going to put up to uh, Torito in the Wolf Return. I've seen better renewals of this race. I really have. Um, but uh, he's not for me. He's too short now. He's, he's been getting much shorter. But he did run a big race at Newmarket from a 317-day break six weeks ago. Um, he looked like he will definitely come on for that with the Gosdens, blah, blah, blah. I think Botanical, who's about the second or third favourite at the minute, will come out. He won't run because the ground will be too quick for Roger Varian's horse. And SD is putting up. Uh, Israel. Not very sexy, is he, though, Israel? He's not very sexy, is he? He's he's not very sexy, but he was second to Passenger last time. He beat a Derby winner at Newmarket last year. Loves a bit of fast ground. Has run well here before and and has an awful lot going for him. Um, It might not be very sexy, but it's not a very sexy renewal, is it? Um, He's he's the best horse in the race on, on what we know. Uh, I agree with you, Torito is the danger, but the problem is with Torito, 
would I have him above Isra in the betting? Absolutely not. Certainly not from a form point of view. And, and the rest of them are just bang average, aren't they? Yeah, it's it's not a it's you it is a listed race and it is listed race quality. Don't get me wrong, but usually this is a they have horses in here that are the group know, race and drag normally, isn't it? Yes, yes, correct. That is correct, Testy. Right, okay, we'll wrap it up there. We've just gone over twenty minutes. That's day one of Royal. Oh, no, 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 you miss one. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I have. On to the final race at Ascot, which has only been there a couple of years now. This is the six fifteen. Yeah, I know. That, that I, know. I know. I know. This is the well. We've got bonus content here. This is the six fifteen at Ascot on Tuesday. SD fancies one. I do not. I think it's a one mile six handicap. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't actually on about this. Sorry, I've completely missed it, and I've got this, 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 this wretched iPad which is which is frozen. But I do like Intenso. I thought I thought he ran a pretty good race here last time. You can see the iPad just absolutely twirling around like a bloody dozy donut. Um, I thought he ran a very good race at Newmarket last time. Um, and I thought he was reasonably unexposed at the trip for, for, for Johnny G. Um, just a second. It's loading. Good heavens. It's like your Wi-Fi connection, this. Holly Doyle um, to do the riding, has ridden at Royal Ascot before, etc. Yes, Holly, Holly Doyle's done well on it. But I, 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 thought that, I thought the run at Newmarket was noteworthy. I think he's happy, he's happy on fast ground. He's very much unexposed and on the earth, uh, and I think the mark of ninety nine is perfectly perfectly workable. And I think from an each way wager point of view, Intenso should go very very well. And it wouldn't be a major festival meeting here on races now without SD putting up a horse at an away meeting, for example, when uh, when Cheltenham's on, he puts up horses at Sedgefield. When Royal Ascot's on, he puts up horses at Beverly. Indeed, indeed, and uh, I thought. Waff Court, who uh, ran at uh, ran at Ponte Carlo last week, twenty five, trained by Brian Rothwell, who probably trained the last winner. Well, his last winner when Boys Home were abandoned it's that long ago. <laughs> um, but he he ran a race full of abundant promise last September. He said he's had a bit of a spell in the wilderness, but but last week at Pontefract was was a bit better. Now they quietly backed the horse in the morning. And he got mown over um, coming round the final bend. So forget that. Um, and I think a mark here of of fifty four when you when he was given seventy two started is 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 more than more than tractable. And uh, James Sullivan's on board doing the steering and. I just think 25 is a bit big for a horse who ran so well here last September and showed signs of coming to life last time in what isn't a great race. I mean, Freddie Robinson's the right favourite. Um, but no, I was, I was quietly, quietly <laughs> optimistic. Waff Court was the bet of the day. <laughs> Where else will you find people tipping up 54 rated horses on the eve of Royal Ascot? But that's what you get on races now. Don't get so excited about Royal Ascot. Ed told you so. Bet responsibly, you know. Right. Very excited. You're not allowed to call it. You're not allowed right, to shut up. Shut up. We've gone way over time. We've gone way over time. That's your Tuesday preview. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.